the season. Indiana pushing the tempo right away here in this second half. IU looking for their first Big Ten win, 0-7-2 so far. They are 2-7-7 overall. A solid work and goal from Bethany Copel, Indiana's all-time leader in shutouts with 23. She's halfway to number 24 here. Only her third start of the season after losing the job to Jamie Gerstenberg, who's not playing today. This one into the box, deflected up into the air on that boot from Akeel, who had the goal in the first half for Indiana. And it settles for a Michigan goal kick. So in the first minute, Indiana again dictating the terms. Yeah, another warning shot for Michigan there. I mean, it's, look, the second half, the start of the second half is an opportunity to, to reset the tone, to try and shift the momentum, to come out as the more aggressive side. And we just haven't seen it. I mean, look at Indiana here. Look at the press that they're putting on, the speed, trying to close things down, force Michigan to play negative and play backwards. And now you have Sammy Woods complaining about the lack of a call. And so you can see that, you know, Indiana is bothering Michigan right now. Hannah Blake, who did not start the match beginning this second half for the Wolverines. Now toward Bridenstein. Back over to Hawkinson. She lets it rip. Header attempt from Michigan. Boy, pretty good look but it's a bit wide of the mark there for Lily Farkas and Michigan with one of its better offensive opportunities just as a response to Indiana. Yeah, that was a cross put into a dangerous area and a good attempt by, by Lily Farkas, kind of a lunging, diving attempt at that header, uh, glanced off her head and out of bounds, but better for Michigan there, no question about it. Doesn't look like there's any formational changes for either team. It's still 4-4-3 for Michigan and the 4-4-2 diamond uh, for Indiana. Indiana with a takeaway. Sophia Black churns her way into that final third. Up ahead to Akeel. Leaves it back for Olivia Smith. She'll zip it in there. Deflected in front into the arms of Nino. Back and forth we go with offensive opportunities and Nino secures yet another save. That That's was, her seventh. That was a really, really good cross. I mean, that had the right height to, to make it dangerous where you can get a hip on it, a knee, a foot, whatever you can, right into a dangerous spot at the back post. And if it wasn't for Sarah Bridenstine just kind of nudging the IU player away, that would have been a real problem. Offside there on Michigan, Sammy Woods had some clear space. We're less than three minutes in and there's been a ton of action with Indiana leading 1-0. Those offsides have been a problem for Sammy Woods in the last few games where you and I have been here, Brian. I think she got called for at least three, if not four, in the Northwestern game, and now we see another one here, and it's it's just frustrating because that's the kind of mistake that is very easily correctable. You're not asking a player to do anything physically that they're not capable of. It's, it's a simple matter of looking down the line and seeing where you are relative to the other defenders. So the fact that that problem continues is the type of thing that just kind of you know, it just, it just wears on a coach over time because it's a very easily correctable problem. There is a whistle on Michigan and Emily Lason. And you wonder with Sammy Woods, seven goals. She's still in the top ten of the Big Ten, tied for seventh, but none have come in Big Ten play. And you wonder if, kind of like Michigan as an entire group, down the stretch this season of not getting a whole lot to go, you wonder if Woods, it's just mental at times for her without that goal in Big Ten play. Yeah, I mean, that's a very, very valid question. I mean, any time that you are scoring more or less at will in the non-conference and then all of a sudden, week after week after week goes by and you're not able to put the ball in the net uh, as a goal scorer where that's your chief responsibility, that's the reason why you're on scholarship, that can definitely wear on people. There's no question, Brian. So that loft by Wampler for Indiana, an easy catch for Nino. And one of the stars for Indiana, Paige Weber, is down. She is a Michigan native. She is a senior who, like Sammy Woods, has not been able to get a whole lot going offensively after a five-goal season last year. Just won this season, and she's getting looked at by trainer William Means. So both teams will head back to their respective head coaches to get a quick conversation point. For Michigan, Anaya League is a bit slow to walk over to the bench as well league just returning from an injury suffered a couple of weeks ago against Northwestern and that's the last thing you want to see in a match where you know, both groups the season is over after this Hoosiers just hoping for their first Big Ten win Michigan trying to finish above 500 and here
here's Paige Weber, a star for IU, down and hurt. And in prepping for this match, I know you were impressed with what Weber brought to the table. Yeah, I really was. I mean, she she was probably the lone Indiana attacker I saw that that had a little a little trick to her. She was able to to rip off a little step over if she needed to. She wanted to take players on one v one. You know, again, she only came into the the game I believe with a single goal this season, but her expected goals total was three, which means that based on the quality of the opportunities that she has had this season, she would be expected to score three goals and so that shows you that even though the final product hasn't necessarily been there everything up until that point is good and so there's there's definitely a lot of, of danger in a player like her because all she needs is one of those to go in and all of a sudden the, the tide starts to turn and you know if she's unable to return to this game that would be a big loss for the Hoosiers because as I mentioned she's the one player I thought who was really willing to take defenders on 1v1 and, and cause problems from a technical standpoint. So Paige Weber exits. Sarah Serta, who was very involved as a freshman in that first half, she will enter here for Indiana. Michigan also bringing in freshman Taylor Brennan. So just shy of five minutes deep into the second half, Indiana maintaining its 1-0 advantage thanks to a first half goal from Ava Akil, her team leading third of the season. Indiana still dominating in the shots category, 14 to four. There's Brenton getting involved early, the deflection toward Layson. And a whistle there on Indiana. And Layson to me looks more comfortable in this role right now when Avery Coletta is not on the field than when she's paired with Coletta because Layson, as we've talked about in prior broadcasts, is a defender by trade. So when you ask her to play in the midfield, just by default, and this is not a critique, this is just how it works in players' minds, she's naturally going to be more defensive because that's what she's played you know, the majority of her career. So when you pair her alongside Coletta, who is also a defensive-minded holding midfielder, it creates situations where the Wolverines don't necessarily have a lot of options going forward. But now that Coletta is on the bench and you have Farkas and Hannah Blake, two very attacking options in there, I think it leaves Layson, you know, with a little more freedom and not really feeling like she has to, you know, constantly monitor her position in relation to Avery Coletta. And so I think as a sole holding midfielder, she can perform a little bit more comfortably based on what I've seen this season. Bridenstine tried to fire one ahead, deflected by Natasha Kim. So Michigan with a throw in just outside of its offensive third. Wolverines down a goal. No whistle there as another Hoosier falls down. That was Olivia Rush. Letting them play here as that one gets past Michigan. Around the touchline, Indiana gets possession back. Yeah, that's a tough one there for Hawkinson because I think the referee kind of, I, I believe, played an advantage. After she got clipped in the ankle, she retained possession, so he let the play continue, which is what you're supposed to do. But unfortunately for Hawkinson, her next touch was an overhit pass that went out of bounds. Indiana will reset to the goalkeeper, Bethany Copel, playing in front of some friends and family, the Novi native, her final match with the Hoosiers. She enrolled in the spring semester of 2017. It's so odd with some of the COVID years, of course, an injury season for Copel last year. You have some lengthy careers, case in point on Michigan's side. The Wolverines have now the all-time leader in matches. Meredith Hawkinson playing her 98. That might never be touched. Yeah, and what's what's interesting, too, is, is to see what the players do with that eligibility from an academic standpoint because look you know a lot of these players are not going to go on to play professionally and I remember I was watching a video online recently of a college football player who for various reasons COVID included a lot of the same things you were just talking about is in his seventh or eighth year of eligibility wow. somehow because of multiple medical red shirts and anyway they were asking him like what have you been doing and he said well I'm, I'm going to finish my second master's degree by the time I leave so this is a guy who you know comes in gets an undergraduate degree, and is going to walk away with two masters. And you look at a player like Copel, who I'm sure has is going to have at least one master's degree, if not more than one, just based on the amount of time she's been in school. And so, you know, it's an opportunity to play more soccer games, sure, but it's also a better chance to set yourself up for later in your life. 
Wood sizing things up. Couldn't fire to head to Wolf. It looked like she was offside. Wood smartly maintained it. And some miscommunication. Wolverines lose it. Indiana on the push. Here's Sarah Serta. She came in for the injured Paige Weber. And Serta's probably been their second best player today. I mean, she's, she's technical as well. I mean, that's a nice shield right there with her body. Serta going to work against Taylor Brennan. Freshman on freshman. And Brennan forced her to the touchline. And that will be a Michigan goal kick. Good defense there. And a, a fun matchup as you look to the future for both of these programs. I think both have to be pretty pleased with the freshmen, soon to be sophomores they have around both yeah. Bloomington and Ann Arbor. Yeah, I would agree. And the tricky part, though, is that you still don't know which players are going to use their COVID year and which ones aren't sure. because that's a decision that doesn't have to be made right now. And, and frankly, at least based on you know calendar rules, it can be made quite late. Um, it can be made all the way up until basically the start of next season for a player to be able to come back. So from a roster building standpoint, you hear about this more in football and basketball because they're the most popular sports in college. But it's in all levels right now where you're not really sure what your team is going to look like, who you need to target in the portal. But yes, I agree that there are some bright spots uh, in the freshman and sophomore classes on both sides that we're getting to see uh, today and they're gaining extra opportunities here in this game that you know as we've talked about doesn't have any playoff implications. Foul on Sophia Black now Bridenstein pushes it ahead. Yeah, case in point on those lengthy time frames to make decisions we reference Meredith Hawkinson she did not decide until after last season to return for this season and the incoming freshman and the current freshman, they don't have that COVID year. It's back to four. This isn't an all-encompassing type of a deal on a roster. Yeah, no doubt about it. When I was coaching at Central Connecticut, the year after I left, um, you know, in that following summer, I was working a camp, and, and one of my former players was at the camp as well. And I was talking to the head coach after I left, and he said, yeah, you know, let her know that if she wants to come back, we have a spot for her all the way up until the start of the season. You know, wow. all she has to do is be able to enroll in classes academically, and she can come back. So it can really, I mean, you're talking about potentially not knowing if it's not going to be 10 or 12 players, but one or two that could drastically change a team depending on the caliber of their play that you don't know if they're coming back till August. A little bit more than 10 minutes into this second half here in Ann Arbor. Indiana maintaining the 1-0 advantage. And an offside call there is Ava Keel. The difference maker in this one with the lone goal, she was too far. The referee here is going to have a little conversation with Sammy Woods and Olivia Smith because a, a moment or two earlier there was a challenge for the ball and they got a little tangled up and Sammy Woods, you know, threw a little bit of a soft elbow and Smith kind of got tangled up with her again. And so it was definitely going both ways. But the referee said something to them at the time. And then credit to him, you know, it's good officiating to let the play go, not break it up when it's happening. But then when there is a natural stoppage to come back and address his concern, which he did right there. So Bridenstine's free kick tries to flip the field a little bit. Wolverines just one shot here in the second half, only had three in the first half when they were outshot significantly 13 to 3. Indiana's had the momentum. They have the 1-0 lead. Uh, now 11 minutes into this second half, and the Hoosiers now get it back. Serta, as active as ever, up to a keel. Settles things, reverses course. Deflected out there by Michigan. And it was Bridenstein. And that one well over the goal for Indiana, so... A reset here on a goal kick for Michigan. You know, I spent a minute or two earlier talking about